how to make the most out of your cloud code. This is a very interesting tweet that I stumbled upon that was published by Boris Cherny, which is basically uh, one of the creators of cloud code. And he shares in this tweet um, how he sets up cloud code. And I was happy to see that many of things that he is doing, I am already doing, but I also learned a lot from some of the processes that he implemented. And I'm going to share everything with you in this short uh, video under the assumption that you haven't stumbled upon this um, post, which I believe, uh, I mean, went pretty much viral. So first of all, he claims that his setup is surprisingly vanilla. I don't know if it's exactly is vanilla, but uh, he claims that it, he doesn't personalize it so much. Um, but let's just get going. So first of all, he runs five different clauses in parallel in his uh, terminal. Numbers them, gives them, gives each tab a, a number, and he uses system notification in order to know when Claude needs his input. So this is something that I um, been doing for a while now. I have a, a post um, a hooks implemented that basically make a sound whenever a Claude needs my attention. So I highly recommend that you use this because it's very valuable. And I also started using a Tmux or Tmux, T-M-U-X, which I did a video about a few days ago, uh, which is basically a new form of a terminal. Let me show you. Uh, this is a terminal. I customize it according to my needs. Very easy to add uh, panes, um, create more sessions, change uh, the view, etc. It's way easier than just having the the native terminals, in my case, it's WSL. Uh, moving forward. So, ah, and one very important thing that he also mentioned, which I didn't know about, is that you can, um, if you're running a task in cloud code in your desktop and you want to start working in the cloud, meaning, for example, in mobile, what you can do, you can use, let me show you what you can do. You can come here. You just send it to the background by clicking this. This way it is being sent to the background, assuming that you have Git installed and it's in a Git repository. And then you can go to cloud, the, your cloud app in your mobile, go to the cloud code section, and you can fetch the conversation, which is amazing because basically it allows you to keep on uh, working uh, on the fly and monitoring what Claude is doing, uh, what Claude Code is doing, even on mobile, and then you can fetch it back to your desktop. So highly recommend checking this out. Moving forward, next, uh, basically he says that he runs everything in parallel. This is kind of similar to what I said, teleporting back and forth between um, between devices. He uses Opus 4.5 for everything. Makes sense. I increase my my subscription to the 200 bucks subscription and i'm very happy about it um if you guys can afford it i recommend it of course it, it makes a big difference in my opinion than using the 100 because when i was on the 100 bucks per month plan i very often got restricted sometimes i viewed it as a blessing because it meant that i can slow down do other stuff but more often than not um i would prefer to just keep on going Next best practice that he shares is his team shares a single cloud MD for the cloud code repo. And um, basically the whole team contributes stuff into this cloud MD. This is an example. Um, next thing, during code review, I will often tag cloud on my uh, workers PR to add something to the cloud MD as part of the PR. We use uh, the cloud GitHub action. Um, as you can see here, this is something that I'm don't do so often, to be honest. I have actually, I, I have Codex going over all my PRs, Codex by OpenAI. I don't know if it matters or, you know, there is this notion that you need a different agent or adversarial agent to check out what you've built with, uh, with the initial agent. So this is why I decided to use Codex for all the PRs. It goes over everything and, and checks. Next, most sessions start in plan mode. Uh, shift tab twice 
Uh, and then he said, if my goal is to write a pull request, I will use plan mode and go back and forth with Claude until I like the plan. From there, I switch to auto accept and let um, Claude one shot it. So I highly recommend using plan mode as much as possible and also uh, using the ask questions feature. Basically, you tell Claude, uh, you prompt it to ask you questions regarding what you want to build. And then uh, after he has all the clarifying questions, basically it, he helps you proactively plan what you want to build. And this usually gives better results. Next, use slash commands for every inner loop workflow that I end up doing many times a day. So as an example, commit push PR. You don't want to write it every every time again, again. So whenever you notice yourself writing stuff more than once, Oh, I wouldn't say more than once, but frequently, just create a custom command for it. Next, I use a few agents, a few sub agents regularly uh, on a regular basis. So code simplif simplifier, which simplifies the code after Claude is done working. Verify app has detailed instructions for testing Claude code end to end and so on. Similar to slash commands, I think of sub agents as automating the most common uh, parts of the workflow that I do um, that he does often. So the build validator, the code architect, one call guide, etc. I must admit that I'm not using sub agents so often, except for um, in a custom command that I built, which is called reinforce, which basically takes all the recent code that was uh, generated and it goes over it and looks for bugs uh, and looks for bugs. Now, uh, one thing that I implemented lately is I explicitly tell um, the custom in the custom command the instructions are explicitly to do at least five verification loops of the code because I notice that even if a cloud code writes the code and then I call an adversarial agent to verify the code and fix the bugs, it might find four, three, seven, whatever. But if I run it again, it usually finds even more. So what I did in the custom command, I told it explicitly to do at least five iterations and each iteration has a different purpose. So the first one is making sure that we didn't break anything from a broad overview. The second one is more of a, of a security agent, looks for bugs or security breaches that were created in the code. The third one is more of a UX UI focus. Uh, the fourth one, I don't re really remember, but I have five of these. And I invite you to kind of add, I think the fourth one is more of a, from a performance pers perspective. And the fifth one is um, perhaps writing unit tests. I don't remember, but the, the whole idea is that I explicitly changed it from doing only one verification to doing five, at least five verifications. I highly recommend that you check it out. I feel that it was valuable. Next thing, he uses post tool use hook to format Claude's code. This is just an example. In terms of permissions, he doesn't use the dangerously skip permissions. Instead, he uses permissions um, to pre-allow different commands. And this is exactly something that I'm adding at the moment. Basically, I'm updating. I asked Claude to write all types of permissions that comes to mind and categorize them by allow, deny, or ask. These are basically the three categories that are proposed by Claude, which he follows. So as you can see here, it added all of them now by default to the settings. So you can do this as well. And afterwards, when you're going to write permissions, permission, let me open a different tab, new pane below, upload. There is an issue over here with the permissions, but I just want to show you that when you come here, you see you have the permissions allow us deny and you can move them around so this can save you a ton of of headache of every time manually approving um, different bash commands etc 
moving forward. We discuss permissions. Okay. Cloud Call uses all my tools for me. It often searches and posts uh, to Slack, has big query queries to answer analytics questions, etc. etc. And this is basically just making sure that you have MCPs installed and and tools. The next one is very valuable and I, I might create a dedicated post about this. So for very long running task, I will either prompt Claude to verify its work with a background agent when it's done, B, use an agent stop hook to do it more deterministically, or C, use the Ralph Wiggum plugin, um, which is very interesting. The, the, the Ralph Wiggum plugin, Ralph Wiggum is a character from Simpsons, which I believe he was very persistent or, or something like this. And this is why this is a call, uh, based on, on his name, based on his character, this plugin was, was um, invented, I guess. Basically, the plugin works as follows. You just add a plugin and then you say what you would like to achieve and what is the criteria for done, how does done look like and how many iterations you are willing for Claude to do this. And then Claude's uh, cloud code just goes and executes this, uh, whatever the task was. And before it finishes, it starts another loop, uh, verifies himself and builds or optimizes whatever he built initially in the, in the previous loop until it is done. So basically this allows you to have very long running task and it basically can one shot, I, I wouldn't say it's not exactly one shot, but basically with one prompt, you can generate stuff that is more complex and, and perhaps more robust because it just starts an, an I wouldn't say an infinite loop, but a, a very long loop until it achieves its, its goal, its goal. So I'm thinking of making a dedicated video for this. For example, I've been using it in the last week or so. I've used it for, um, a few apps that I didn't really want to invest time into them or too much thought, just, you know, like hobby apps and one work for, I guess, almost three hours and it turned out pretty nice. So I think it, it can be useful. One thing to mention, um, and I think he mentioned in 13. Yes. And this relates to, to this point. So a final tip and probably the most important thing is in order to get results out of Cloud Code, you have to let Cloud Code a way to verify its work. If Cloud has a feedback loop, it will obviously the quality would be better. So what I suggest is making sure that you have either Playwright MCP installed or um, the Cloud Code Chrome extension. And because this way you, uh, Cloud Code can verify what's going on in the front end and also read the console logs and the dev tools, etc. And then basically you can build end to end tests um, and verify what you did. And based on the input, or I wouldn't say the input, but based on the results of the, of the test, you can fix the code again and again. So this is something that I think many people probably overlook. It uh, does require that you install one of the MCPs and sometimes it's a bit of a hassle. I, I mean, when you're a Windows user, I feel it wasn't, it, it, the process wasn't frictionless, just setting this up. But if you're on, on Linux or Mac, I believe it's not such a hassle, but these are, these two MCPs are very important, like the code Claude Chrome extension or the Playwright one, because they allow you to close the loop and self-verify. So whenever I write a task, and what, I guess whenever he writes a task, I also, I'm not always doing like test-driven development, but I would tell it also to come up with a um, criteria for how does that look like. And after it wrote or developed the code, I send it to verify that everything is working. Very often I also connect it to the database, um, to the, um, the logs of railway or Google cloud, whatever the web app is hosted. But again, also adding 
the capability to read the dev tools and the console and actually taking a screenshot of what's going on on the front end and verifying that it makes sense, this is very, very crucial. I think that is pretty much it um, for this video. I think um, obviously Cloud Code is pretty new and things are evolving very fast. But it, for me, it was very interesting to see um, what he posted and the practices that he's using. I'm hoping that he releases more similar stuff. I just saw another um, workshop that was done by someone else from the Anthropic team, uh, someone else from the Anthropic team, which was valuable and interesting as well. I might cover the takeaways in an upcoming video. But that's pretty much it for now, guys. If you enjoyed this video, obviously like and subscribe. Leave a comment below with any best practices that you've incorporated into your workflow. And until next time, keep on automating.